so it's time for another gardening week video and there's not going to be much gardening done unfortunately this week but i'll do my best uh, anyway i am off to the east coast to live on the west coast so i'm going all the way across country and to one of my favorite places to holiday at this time of year which is filey and uh, yeah i'll show you a bit of what i'm going to be doing over the week and uh, then we'll get back and we'll see how everything coped I'm in the polytunnel this morning now because we had quite a frost last night, minus three in the polytunnel, so probably minus four outside. And so I just had to pop in, open up the polytunnel and unfleece everything. Everything looks fine. So hopefully for the rest of the week we'll be frost free. So I'm leaving the doors open and uh, ventilation, I think, at this time of year is probably more important than protecting things from the cold. Anyway, let's get on hiking. So this is my first walk of the day and uh, yeah, I'm about an hour in. I don't really like being in the car for more than an hour or so at a time. So I'm either braking at a service station or I'm out finding places to walk on the way. And uh, this is a particularly nice little spot to get out for an hour or so and uh, get some breakfast so I'm in Filey now and this is my morning walk to the shops along the beach I'm actually staying at Filey Bay which is kind of like this little mock village it's all holiday homes and it's beautiful it's really well maintained it can be slightly cheesy um, because it's kind of a mock village but uh, if you can get over that then it's really lovely and it just has this most amazing walk down to the uh, the beach from the village itself and I kind of treasure it <laughs> every single time I come here and I've been here many times that little walk down to the beach it's yeah it's just one of the prettiest I've ever seen really and uh, it can be slightly inconvenient staying here though because the tide comes right in and so if there's a high tide in the morning it's not easy to get into Filey village itself which is here um, without getting in the car, which obviously I'm trying to avoid since I'm on, hol on a hiking holiday. And I am going all the way along these cliffs. And I'm almost getting my feet wet. And I should kind of just take this opportunity to say that um, it's always a joke between Debbie and I that she's always slipping over when we're out walking and yesterday I managed a quite impressive <laughs> fall whilst I was filming a video for you guys and so I managed to actually capture the fall and so here you go here is my fall in all of its slow motion glory and uh, yeah I'll never be able to joke with Debbie again with a straight face about my proficiency and sure-footedness compared to hers. So that view that I've just shown you there is of Flamborough Cliffs, which is a great place to go to by car, but the walk isn't very good. I'm walking to Scarborough and I, it's a long walk, so I won't do it all on video. But I will just give you a few little snippets as I go, because uh, it is uh, a very special walk, part of the Cleveland Way. And I think I'll leave it there for now. So just about halfway there. I always think the views get better from here on in. And there's some very cool wild beaches on this walk as well. This one is a little bit difficult to access, but the next one is pretty great. So this is definitely one of those walks where it 
really um, pays to do it both directions because it looks so different when you're on the return journey and here this is a beautiful beach here really great and the access down to there is really good there's a little shop and toilets and everything because there's a caravan site up on the hills there and there's Scarborough not very far away now and so here we are Scarborough Bay very nice so I'll settle down for a picnic in a few minutes somewhere around there in my favourite spot and that might be me done for the day so because I'm on holiday this week and away for four nights I've actually got all of the food that we've grown and that we kind of eat fresh that I, just me, I'm going to eat uh, this week. So it's a great opportunity to answer that question that I'm always being asked. What do you eat in a week, Steve? So I am on a hiking holiday, so I've got a lot more fruit than I would normally eat. So a couple of pieces of fruit, maybe three pieces of fruit a day. And my preference at the moment at this time of year, nectarines, pears and apples, organics, and four salads. So here's salads in bags, look a lot nicer when they're on a plate. Loads of different leafy greens in there, loads of tomatoes, spring onions, carrots, things like that. And a hunk of cheese and some eggs. So uh, that's pretty nice. And then I've got these little bags, which are lovely. And these are basically just like bean tips and chard and spinach. And I just drop those in with my steamed veg at the end. And then I've got these little cooked veg bags. And so these have got beetroot and onions and carrots and all sorts of brassica greens in them. And uh, yeah, loads, loads of onions and garlic and all that sort of thing. So pretty good. And yeah, maybe a little bit of dried fruit for when I'm out hiking, dried apples from the allotment and dried pears from the garden. And I think that is kind of pretty much it. So that will be my supper, because that's when I have my salad and my evening meal. That's when I have my cooked veg, fruit I'll take with me, dried fruit I'll take with me, and I don't know, it's just wherever I find a good place for breakfast and lunch, uh, I'll eat that there. So anyway, that is typical of what I would eat in four days off the allotment uh, all through the year. And obviously I'm uh, having to buy fruit at the moment, but we would normally be eating fruit off the allotment as well. So I'm on the last stretch of the last walk of the holiday. I'm just walking back into Whitby, having just walked along the cliffs. And that walk from Whitby to Robin Hood's Bay, is just the most splendid walk. The quality of the paths is excellent, even though they are, you know, rough cliff paths. They've been well maintained. And the views are just, yeah, they're just stupendous, really. And I chose to walk back along this old railway line, which is quite a lot longer than the cliff path, but just provides a nice break from the complexity of, a, of walking along the edge of a cliff. And as you can probably hear, it's very windy as well. So it's uh, nice to have the wind on my back and be a little bit away from the cliff face. So I'm back from holiday and I did manage to do a little bit of gardening this week. I pricked out my lettuces, I pricked out my chilli peppers and my tomatoes and this is the last batch of chilli peppers for me and uh, all the other successions are looking quite nice so I'm pretty pleased with the way all those are going. So it's nice to get all of those finished with and the tomatoes that I did are just the early ones to go in the conservatory 
on the kitchen windowsill, in hanging baskets on the allotments and things like that. So I haven't even sown my main crop uh, tomatoes yet. And just before I left actually, what I did was I just put some uh, parsnip seeds in between two layers of kitchen roll in a sealed container and just left them wet and left them to it and they were all sprouting when I got back so I've just cleared space in one of my spinach beds made some little holes and dropped the little seedlings in and hopefully because they're in a cold frame it's quite warm hopefully I will get a reasonably early crop of parsnips out of that never tried this chitting of parsnips technique before but um, hopefully it will mean that they are in good leaf in April. It's nice and sunny in April, so they should put on some good growth. I'll take all the remaining spinach out in one or two weeks time and put in onions. So then that will be an onion bed interplanted with parsnips. Obviously I'll har harvest the onions in August, leave the parsnips to grow on until probably September, which is kind of my target for harvesting them. I've only got 24 parsnips, but they've good spacing, so hopefully they'll be nice and big even in September. And then that will be our parsnip crop that will see us through all of September and October. And then we'll move on to our main crop beds in November and all the way through winter. So that is pretty much it by the harvest. So let's take a quick look at today's harvest. As we're just starting to kind of enter the hungry gap, when all the brassicas are kind of traditionally going to seed and everybody's pulling them out, and none of this year's veggies is ready yet. So obviously that's not applying to us so much, but uh, yeah, it's always a challenge to have a full harvest table in the hungry gap and we'll see how we do so let's just talk through a few of the highlights here so we've got lots of collects there and look, this is my box here which is my favorite little box of loads and loads of these beautiful little bustle sprout um, blown sprouts basically which i think are even better than sprouts and these which are absolutely gorgeous so these are the little red bustle sprouts and they just make these beautiful little rosettes when they blow and they're a bit like a colette but I think they're even better than a colette and uh, so never pull your, <laughs> pull your bustle sprouts out if you've got tiny little sprouts like I've got on some of them because you get these they're just amazing and then actually these are the last not the last the close to the last of the garlics that we've got and I've highlighted these because I'm planting these now for green garlic uh, and that green garlic will be ready in sort of early summer and it just gives us a continuous harvest of green garlic until the leeks are ready and that's one of the techniques that we use to make sure that we've got something leek like all the way through the year so underneath there I've just got our weekly harvest of potatoes red onions looking lovely shallots there just a few more garlics um, golden beetroot we've got loads of red beetroot but for some reason we've only got golden beetroot on the table uh, all these amazing brassica leaves so again lots and lots of these beautiful little bustle sprout leaves and uh, absolutely gorgeous I'm really happy with those and we've got field bean tips here more field bean tips at the back there the uh, baby celery stems so it's nice to have celery at this time of year and then masses and masses of spinach of course because can kind of now is the kind of time for peak overwintered spinach and so all those boxes and boxes at the back there are all spinach and we've got some really nice purple sprouting broccoli as predicted the spring varieties of purple sprouting broccoli are now ready just as the winter ones are finishing 
some parsley, some radish, chard, the penultimate harvest of lamb's lettuce. Gorgeous stuff. And the penultimate harvest of miner's lettuce. Salad onions, salad onion tops, and the salad bases. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Oh, I forgot to mention the carrots. Carrots looking pretty good. Got a lot of carrots left. And as I'm sure I've mentioned many times now, picking them all before they go to seed is always the challenge. Now, what I normally do is I normally have three containers of salad, of salad, three containers of carrots, which I kind of hold in reserve. And when we finish harvesting them out of the ground, which is generally at the end of March, we use those three containers through April. But I did a test harvest from those yesterday and they are horrible. So I don't know what happened to that batch of carrots, but they're all holy and they look, you know, they're not beautiful orange like these. They're very um, kind of yellowy colored. They just look really sickly and bad. So fortunately, I still got loads in the ground. So I think I'm just gonna harvest a whole load of those and stick them in the fridge. Um, and uh, yeah, otherwise, as I say, They'll probably end up going to seed sometime in April and then we won't have any carrots all through April because our new season carrots won't be ready till May. So anyway, I think I've mentioned everything on the table today. So I'm quite, yeah, I'm quite encouraged. It's looking good. So I hope you like this quick video. My name is Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel and I'll see you soon.